the imperative, the infinitive, the present tense, the past tense, the present perfect, the past perfect. All right, let's begin. Vær glad. Vær glad. Vær glad. All right, and so the very first thing here, you see this, vær glad. This is the imperative. And if I want to tell you to be happy, then I would say vær glad. Imperative is the shortest form. It's the shortest form of the verb. It's a direct command. And the one over here. At være eller ikke at være. Yeah. At være eller ikke at være. Now this one is the infinitive. And what is that? What is this infinitive? The infinitive is the one you see in the dictionary. At være eller ikke at være. Okay. And very often you'll see an at a t before the infinitive. At være eller ikke at være. Jeg er din far. Jeg er din far. <laughs> yes. Jeg er din far is of course I am your father. And this is very basic. Er is am or are is. So, jeg er. This is the present tense. And this is the thing that I'm doing right now or doing in general. Then we use the present tense. Ja, din far. Han var fantastisk. Han var fantastisk. <laughs> so, this is the past tense. Eh? Han var fantastisk. He was fantastic or amazing. This is, of course, the most basic verb of all. Eh? At være, to be. So, you gotta know all of these. And they're sort of, well, they are actually irregular. And it's annoying, but you still gotta learn it. Han var fantastisk. He was fantastic. In the past. Han var fantastisk. Du har været venlig i dag. Du har været venlig i dag. Okay, so this is a little more tricky, at least for some learners. So, du har været venlig i dag is you have been friendly today. Like meaning that in the day that is still today, it has passed, you have been friendly throughout the whole day. Like the whole day, the whole time, you have been friendly. That's what it means. So, the present perfect is what we use when it's something that is connected to the present, but happened in the past. Well, often it started in the past, eh? and then it's still going on in the present. There is also other cases where we use it, but you'll see that soon enough. Du har været venlig i dag. Jeg havde været dogen i lang tid. Jeg havde været dogen i lang tid. Okay, so this one is uh, what we call før datid, right? past perfect. I had been lazy for a long time, or in Danish, I had været dogen i lang tid. Now, this is a little bit different, right? because this is when you're already in the past. Like, let's say you're describing a situation, and then before that, something had already been going on, or something had already happened, right? Which is why we call it før datid, like the pre-past. And sounds silly in English, of course. The thing that happened or started happening before the past that you're already talking about. And it's very important that you know the difference between havel and helvel. You have been or I had been. Jeg havde været dogen i lang tid. Gør det. Gør det. <laughs> okay, so. Gør det. Do it. This is the imperative, and as you can see, there is no e, because the e, that would be the infinitive, right? Gotti, do it. Gotti, can you do something? Can you do something? Right, so, like I just said, this is the infinitive, can do something? And it needs to be infinitive, because you have can right here. If you have another verb first, like whatever the verb basically, then the second verb needs to be infinitive. Can do go, can you do? It's kind of like in English, a best illustrated in the third person. Like he drinks, I think that's present tense, he drinks. But you could not say he can drinks. <laughs> so uh, yeah, just think about that. It's very important that when you have the first verb, and you can call it the dominant verb, then the second one is infinitive. Very nice. Kan du gøre noget? Han gør det for mig. 
han gør det for mig. Okay, that's nice. So han gør det for mig. Now this is a little bit funny because it's actually the same as the imperative, right? but we do have some of those where they overlap or they share the same spelling. So han gør det for mig. He does it for me or he's doing it for me. Don't worry about like present continuous or something. That's an English problem, not in Danish. Han gør det for mig. Ink. He does it for me. Han gør det for mig. Jeg gjorde det i går. Jeg gjorde det i går. Okay, very nice. Beautiful. So, jeg gjorde det i går. Ink. Gjorde is of course the past tense. I did it. And yes, this is irregular. We have a J in there and we have a D that's silent in gjorde. But that is how we say it. Jeg gjorde det i går. I did it yesterday. Jeg gjorde det i går. Hun har allerede gjort nok. Hun har allerede gjort nok. Okay, so hun har allerede gjort nok. She has already done enough. This could be different situations. It maybe it's like she's already helped enough. Or maybe it's kind of sarcastic. Like, oh, she messed up everything. She just needs to be passive now. But whatever the case, it is something that she's already done it. And it wasn't like a long time ago. It's relating to the present. It's relating to the now. So yeah, it's very important that you get that. We don't use this about the past like you would in English. And we use present perfect a lot more in Danish than in English. Because in English you would say, oh, I watched a good movie. And like you just watched it five minutes ago. But in Danish... We'll get to this later. Then you would say, Jeg har set, en jeg har lige set. I have just watched or just seen. So yeah, we use it a lot more than do in English. Hun har allerede gjort nok. Lægen havde gjort noget forkert. Lægen havde gjort noget forkert. Okay, yes. And so lægen havde gjort noget forkert. The doctor had done something wrong. Of course, what this is, is that it's in the past but it's before the past so let's say the doctor is this happened five years ago that you're talking to the doctor and then prior to that already before that he had done something wrong før that's it past perfect Lene havde gjort noget forkert <laughs> have en god dag have en god dag okay so have en god dag this is very nice and if you live in Denmark I'm sure you heard it a lot of times right? have en god dag Have a good day or have a nice day. And again, this is the imperative. It's someone telling you to have a good day. It is technically, grammatically a command. Even though it might sound weird that it's a command, it is a command. Hey, en god dag. Hey, en god dag. Jeg vil ikke have mus her. Jeg vil ikke have mus her. Okay, very good. So, jeg vil ikke have mus her, og ikke have. But in real life, we rarely say have. That's just like dictionary pronunciation. Jeg vil ikke have mus her. And um, again, it's the infinitive. Because vil, that's another verb, and that is in the present tense. Right? Jeg vil ikke, I don't. Right? Hey, I don't want. Jeg vil ikke have mus her. Yeah, very nice. And it's also what you would use if it's like... To have. Ain't? Oh, it's good to have that. Ain't? They got a hey. It's good to have. That's how we say it. And I know a lot of you must be quite annoyed with the fact that we just pronounce it like H-A, hey. And this is why when we write song lyrics, then we just write H-A apostrophe. <laughs> But that's not correct. Jeg vil ikke mus her. Hvad har du der? Hvad har du der? Okay, hvad har du der? Is the... Present tense, right? because what do you have there? What have you there? It's right now. Right? It's not before, it's not in the future, it's right now. Hvad har du der? Hvad har du der? Damen havde ikke så meget tid. Damen havde ikke så meget tid. Okay, so damen havde ikke så meget tid. The woman or the lady is maybe more appropriate, didn't have so much time. Have is the past. And this one can be a little bit frustrating um, because the pronunciation in have, you don't say the V. Yeah, let's take that again. Have, right? Damon, have. The V is not pronounced. You don't say have or how de or have. I can't even say that. <laughs> We don't say that, okay? 
paid.